everybody, Mike Jeffers, Chicago Jazz Magazine, ChicagoJazz.com. We are live here at the 41st Annual Chicago Jazz Festival, recording live interviews here. The first one of the weekend, and it's a very important one because there's an incredible <laughs> festival coming up, the Hyde Park Jazz Festival, September 28th and 29th in Hyde Park. And I am pleased to be joined by the executive and artistic director, Kate Dumbleton, Congratulations on two titles. <laughs> That's got it. That doesn't sound like a lot of work at all. No, no, it's simple, <laughs> simple, simple. Well, Kate, the, the festival has just grown immensely. This is the thirteenth year of the festival, and first off, let's talk a little bit about what you have coming up on this festival. But I also want to touch back and talk a little bit about some of the history of the fest too. Sure. The thing that I find incredible about the Hyde Park Jazz Festival, it incorporates the entire community. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys are in 13 different locations, well, 11 different locations, 13 different stages. I mean, hundreds of jazz artists, it's unbelievable. We're gonna talk about all of that, but let's talk a little bit about some of these special performances you have coming up because there's sure. a couple that are commissioned specifically mm -hmm. for the Hyde Park Jazz Festival and you do that every single year which is incredible. So now I'm gonna let you talk. <laughs> now that I set the whole thing up, here we go. So let's talk a little bit. Now you've got a couple of different performances coming up that are commissioned. Let's talk about, you You decide. Yeah, okay. Um, well first, thanks for having me. Uh, absolutely. Um, this is the first time I've interviewed with you, so it's really fun. That's right, yeah. Awesome. We've known each other for yeah. a long time, but yeah, we've yeah, never yeah. done interviews. That's great, thank you. Um, so in 2014, we started a commissioning program. Uh, and the reason for that is that I feel as if it's really important to support artists in making new work, yeah. uh, and in particular in jazz, because I think in general there's an assumption that jazz isn't composed and that there isn't a kind of structure to the music that takes work. Right. Um, and so, I, in addition to wanting to be able to pay artists to create new projects, I also kind of wanted to make a statement about the fact that we should be thinking about what it means to support artists as they create new work and not always just making the assumption that they're just going to do it on their own. Um, so we started to commission a couple of artists every year and in some years it's primarily artists from Chicago mm -hmm. and then other years it's artists who are national or international artists or some combination of the two. Yeah. So this year um, we wanted to continue to support young and emerging composers so some of the people making work in Chicago who are kind of on the edge of or on the cusp of being more recognized and who are emerging. And so we decided to commission Angel Bat Dawid, who's a fabulous and super interesting uh, emerging female composer, clarinet player, pianist, vocalist. Uh, she's definitely a uh, multiphonic artist and thinking a lot about the history and trajectory of the ACM yeah. and Afrofuturism and uh, the kind of history, the historical arc of jazz, uh, where it originated, where it's come, and all of the complexity of that. And so her piece has some dance elements, some visual elements, and then it's an 18-piece ensemble oh, wow. that she is conducting. So that should be absolutely stunning and, um, and very powerful. Yeah. And then we have also commissioned Isaiah Collier, who's a young saxophonist, in Chicago who's been coming up on the south side for a number of years and who has a huge following and is very very uh, dedicated and um, interested in Chicago history in particular as well as jazz. He's a sensational musician. Yeah. Uh, and so he's also composing a large piece. His ensemble is 15 musicians. Wow. So they both decided to do um, large scale works. And also what, what I think is really interesting about the two of them is that um, we're having Angel start the day on Saturday at the Logan Center, so her piece is at 1 o'clock. And then Isaiah is closing the day at the Logan Center and his piece is at 9.30. And actually they're both really doing historical narrative pieces about Chicago and jazz history and uh, kind of thinking about the complexity of jazz and uh, who who, where it originated and um, the, the way in which it's been treated over time. Mm -hmm. And so I actually think those two pieces are gonna speak to one another. Yeah. Um, and it, they're really, they're both mining complex histories of the music and its kind of story and its community relationships. And so I actually think it's gonna be amazing to have them start and finish the day in addition to them being their own pieces in right. and of themselves. Yeah. 
You know, uh, you brought up a real interesting point about about the um, music and the fact that pe things get commissioned and all that stuff. Because the things that can get commissioned, I don't think people realize how difficult it is to actually like put together a group, rehearse the group, let alone spend all the time trying to write and compose this thing. And you guys always put something together and put stuff out there to push these artists out there where they would never be able to put something together like that yeah. if it wasn't for you guys. Yeah, well that's, you know, that's the goal is to give them the space and support to, and the platform really, because the festival now has enough visibility that for some of these artists, these pieces are things that help, you know, it's a trajectory into their future work. Yeah. So for example, a couple of years ago, we commissioned Miguel Zenon yep. um, to write a piece for the Spectral Quartet. And that recording that they made of that piece was nominated for a Grammy. So, it's amazing. you know, that that's kind of what we're going for is to create the opportunity for an artist to make something that would otherwise be very hard. And yeah, um, you know, we were at the Logan the other day with Angel and, you know, it's, it's very complicated to put on an 18 person piece. So, you know, the Logan is supporting us to have some rehearsal time there. And we went and, you know, mapped out the stage because they're gonna have dancers. And so it takes a huge amount of work to even yeah. prepare. Uh, I mean, so, that yeah. piece would never come to fruition if it wasn't for the fact that you guys were supporting it because you, I mean, what independent artist, Yeah. well, even, I mean, where are you going to find, like, even a record label or somebody bigger to produce yeah. something like that? It wouldn't happen. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the thing that I love about the Hyde Park Jazz Fest. And before we started recording today, we were talking a little bit about all the different musicians you have on here. I mean, there's, like, I don't know, you already know the number, but there's over 100 musicians performing on this festival in two days yeah. throughout the Hyde Park community. You know, let's talk a little bit about, I mean, and there, it's very eclectic, meaning like there's all different genres of jazz and music in general performing on this festival, and it's been like this for many years. Mm -hmm. So why don't we talk a little bit about what the process is for you sure. as the artistic director and executive director <laughs> to go through the whole thing and just start planning this out because, I mean, there's so many different venues that you're programming, but also just you got to have thousands of people wanting to be on this festival now and you've got to be the person that decides who's playing where what's going to make the most sense for the vision of what the fest is right yeah. so when does that start i mean well it does never stop right you know now. it's like kind of always going in my brain um i would say that there's times of the year when it's more heightened so yep. um you know november between november and and march is when i'm really 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 doing all of the booking um, but it's a fantastically interesting and complex and it's sometimes infuriating process. Um, <laughs> mo mostly because I always want to do more than we can do. Yeah. Um, but the truth of the matter is what makes it possible is the history of jazz in Chicago, in particular on the South Side. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because it, the history of the music, all of these different trajectories of the idea of jazz, jazz adjacent music, improvised music, it all has a really organic history on the south side. So you can pick up on any of those histories and you've got communities of people that are interested in it and you have a history from which it's emanating. Yeah. And so you're not ever kind of like programming out of nowhere. And so the fact that we have so much diversity, stylistic diversity in the festival is really because of the where it is sure it's completely organic so that well, and, and that I think being just, a, to, yeah, just yeah. to jump in i think that's why your festival is so unique compared to every other one yes i mean the chicago jazz fest where we're at right now is is one thing but what you just described makes complete sense and i mean that's why it's so unique yeah and i think that a lot of people that are watching this or have not been down to experience it will find there it's not just another festival no it's not no i mean i've had people come from other countries and cry Really? Because they, they're like, this this is so, like, this is such a community-driven event, and that is the truth. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of that is also that the community started it. Right. So um, it was started by some folks who are from the Hyde Park Jazz Society who yep. have a pop-up jazz club every Sunday night, and there's tons of people go every weekend. And so they decided they wanted to have a little jazz festival and see what would happen. Literally just like, let's try it, you know, in 2007. And um, 
And so the University of Chicago gave them a little bit of seed money and um, they put on a, a small festival with one stage yep. um, and a couple of satellite venues and um, and like 5,000 people came right away. Yeah. Something and so weird. then everybody was like, I guess we have to keep doing this, right? And so it's just kind of grown from there. And so, you know, um, it is, you know, it is a hard thing to program, but in a, in a way it's like a gift yeah. to be an artistic director in this setting because, like I said, everything is kind of there. And so all I try to do is tap in to the, to the histories that I know of and to what I see happening with the music in a broad set of environments and circumstances. And so I go to a ton of concerts um, and I listen to a lot of records and I read a lot and I, I try to talk to artists all the time to hear what they're interested in, uh, in doing. And, you know, sometimes I'll talk to somebody and it'll be three, four years before I can put that project together for them, but it's because I talk to them that it's been in my mind. Yeah. So it's very dialogic, you know, it's very much about relationships and conversations and keeping my ear to the ground. So that's how uh, like a lot of these different projects that pop up at the Hyde Park Jazz Festival come to fruition mm -hmm. where, you know, you might talk to somebody who's playing with a completely different set of musicians and two years later, you're like, wait a minute, I remember them mentioning something. That's fascinating. Yes. And then you're like, Right. Yeah. Well, we commissioned actually Ambrose Akinusri, who's here tonight. Mm -hmm. We commissioned him in 2015, and that came from a conversation I had with him maybe three years or so before, when he was talking about an interest in composing a piece that included conversations he had with some of his mentors, kind of exploring the oral history of jazz education and the way musicians have handed techniques yeah. and history and uh, you know the oral tradition of musicians sharing information and a couple of years later when we were thinking about commissioning based on some storytelling projects that we had done I was like Ambrose it fits completely yeah and so then that's how we commissioned him yeah. so it, it's it's very much about that and I, I think that that's the organicness of it too because I mean you've but you like what you said I mean you've got to talk to a lot of people you're talking to a lot of people and you just file things away yeah and then things organically pop sense. up and they start to make sense yeah so Let's talk a little bit about all the venues because okay. I know people that yeah. are watching this now want to go yes, because obviously everybody is, you know, <laughs> they're like, oh my God, I got to get there. But you're in so many different venues. Yeah. It's, it's really amazing. Now, the cool thing about this, and you tell me when I'm completely wrong, but on Saturday, it's in venues throughout Hyde Park as well as on the main uh, Midway Palisades, yep. right? Did I say that correctly? Liaisons. See, I knew I wasn't going to say it right. That's why I asked. Um, so there's two stages on the Midway. I'm going to call it the Midway. Yes. But then there's also a trolley that takes you all to all the different venues, yep. right? So let's talk about a couple of the venues because, I mean, one of them we talked about a little bit, you know, the International House, Hyde Park Union Church, uh, Sweetwater Foundation. And then there, there's other ones, and we can talk about that, the Rockefeller Cha Chapel, the Smart Museum, Oriental Institute, the Logan Center Screening Room. I might as well just keep reading them all off, right? Uh, Augustana Lutheran Church. But then also you have the um, two stages, the Logan Center, obviously, in the main stage, and then also in the penthouse. Mm -hmm. And then you have the Hyde Park Bank, yep. which is like a landmark bank. Yes. So it's a very cool space to yeah. hear music. And this just shows you the whole community is involved yeah. and you just trolley around and you hit all these different spots. So tell me a little bit about, you know, I'm always curious, like the Rockefeller Chapel, to hear live music in the Rockefeller Chapel, the acoustics in there is just something that you have to experience, yes. I would imagine, yeah. right? So who's performing there? I mean, what's the, uh, uh, how did you come uh, up with all this stuff here? Yeah, so um, a part of the original concept and what has been expanded in the last couple of years is that the idea around the festival was not just about jazz music, but about the idea of highlighting all the cultural organizations in the Hyde Park area. So bringing people down to kind of see and experience the architectural wonders, the community spaces, um, all of the different landmarks that are in that neighborhood. Yep. And, um, and in particular, a combination of local businesses like the Hyde Park Bank. We have some schools like Little Black Pearl. We have several churches, Hyde Park Union Church, one of my favorite venues right. for sure. Uh, and then a lot of museums and cultural spaces, Oriental Institute, Smart Museum and all of yeah. that. The Rockefeller is our kind of 
capstone signature venue for Saturday night. It's the late night one, right? Yeah. It's the final concert of the day. Um, and it's, it's a beautiful acoustic setting, but also very challenging. So programming it, I think so much about that venue because of what will sound good in there. Um, and this year we're having a piece that is um, a new composition by Amir El Safar, mm -hmm. who's actually a Chicago, um, Chicago born and raised trumpet player, but his family um, is from Iraq. And so he has a tremendous amount of um, knowledge about Middle Eastern music, yeah. and as well as being a virtuosic <laughs> jazz trumpeter, and also he's classically trained as well. So his work is really an amalgamation of these different traditions. And he composed a piece for string quartet and, um, and clarinet and bass oh, that okay. I got to hear when I was in Poland in November at a festival. And it was so beautiful. I literally sat in that auditorium and cried through the whole oh, really? piece. Wow. It's gorgeous. So And it, in that setting, it's going to be really yes, incredible, Yes, and so right? it just so happened that he uh, that the, the the promoter that commissioned the piece in Poland was bringing the piece to New York, oh. and it just happened to be the week before the Hyde Park oh. Festival. So I said, well, why don't you stay a couple extra days and come, <laughs> yeah. and we'll do it in the Rockefeller. So it should be beautiful because it's string quartet, bass clarinet, uh, clarinet and bass, and then Amir playing the trumpet. Yeah. Um, and it's a gorgeous piece, and it'll be beautiful in there with no drums. It'll be so... Um, I think glorious, so that should be a super nice. Yeah. And, and these musicians are coming all the way from Poland for the for the piece, so. That's amazing. I mean, and, and just looking through, I mean, we don't have time to talk about every single yeah. artist that's playing, but I mean, you have such a such a, a wide variety. I mean, you, you have Orber Davis's sextet, and then you have, uh, you know, I mean, just, just look at Rich, Richard Johnson is performing solo piano. I mean, you've got to look at the schedule. And of course, what is it? HydeParkJazzFestival.org? Yep. HydeParkJazzFestival.org. We're going to link everything up below. Oh, great. Cool. But I mean, so let's talk a little bit about the times. Uh -huh. It kicks off, I think, 1 o'clock maybe? Is that when the... 1 o'clock on Saturday the 28th, and it goes till midnight. Okay. Uh, and then on Sunday, it's only on the midway. And it goes from 2 o'clock until 7. 2 o'clock till 7. Yep. And it's really cool, too, because you, I, I'm pretty sure it's programmed the same way because when we had a booth down there, it was wild because on the Midway, on Sunday, you see one at one end of the Midway. Yes. And, then and then you walk all the way through. <laughs> it's like and then a you go to the other side. I mean, it's really cool. And everybody goes through. There's going to be great vendors down there. There's a lot yep. of community yep. vendors down there. So you want to get out and support all of that yep. as well. So all the information is at HydeParkJazzFestival.org. Yep. And uh, what did I miss? I mean, we covered a lot of stuff well, here. Well, I mean, I'll just highlight a couple other yeah, performances please. as I could. Um, as many people know, we lost Roy Hargrove last year, yep. um, the fantastic and extraordinary trumpet player who, we, who left us way too soon. Uh, and so we're doing a tribute to him with uh, the drummer that played with him for more than a decade, Willie Jones III. Yep. And he's put together a band of musicians that played with Willie for, or played with Roy for a long time. Um, and so that should be super oh, special. Man. That's at the Logan Center at five o'clock. Yep. Um, I also want to point out we have a really beautiful duo with Sylvie Cavassier and Mary Halverson. Um, it's piano and guitar and two amazing, amazing women in jazz and uh, improvised music. And so that will be very beautiful and special. That's also at the Logan. Um, we have Hamid Drake with Adam Rudolph, which is a pairing of two Chicagoans. They grew up together uh, in the on the north side, but then they met on the south side and have been playing together for 50 years. So this wow. is actually kind of an anniversary performance. <laughs> and they'll be at Augustana Church, which is gorgeous. Yeah, it's gorgeous. That's a new venue for us last year. Again, another acoustic wonder and super beautiful. And then. You know, Ari Brown is going to be there. Urban Pierce, another young musician who's yep. got a great band coming. Sam uh, Trump's going to be. Sam Trump is going to be at Little Black Pearl. Yep. Dana Hall Spring. Um, the fantastic uh, Grammy-nominated artist Tia Fuller will be bringing her Diamond Cut Quartet to play on the Midway in the evening You've on got, Saturday. You've uh, got Dee Alexander with Dee. John McLean. That's kind yeah. of a little new pairing Super that cool they started project. doing. Yep. And that's a very cool thing. Yep. Um, so, you know, there's just a little bit of something for everything, everyone. And I will say, too, one of the stages on the Midway has a dance floor. Oh. And so we have bands that make people want to move. And so that's 
really fun too if you have kids and oh, yeah. or you like to dance or whatever. Yeah. Well, I, I remember one. I, I forget what band it was, but I, I looked and it was like a dance party going on. And yeah. I was like, oh my god, this oh, yeah. is unbelievable. Big time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So all the information: Hyde Park Jazz Festival dot org. Saturday the twenty eighth of September. Sunday the 29th of September. Kate, thanks so much Thank for you stopping. So much this for is amazing. Yeah, I'm glad I we're really doing this because it. we're going to be able to get the information out well ahead yeah, of time. Thank you so much. And everybody come down. There'll be a booth there for the Hyde Park Jazz Festival. Awesome. So stop by, see Kate because she's usually in there. If she's I'm not running around. Running I got around. a clipboard and a, my walkie talkie. <laughs> and that's, well, that's because you have two titles. You have to be exactly. doing things all the time. Exactly. I got two hats on. <laughs> yeah. All right. So thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Of course, thanks for the Chicago Jazz Fest for having yes, us down absolutely. here. And uh, get all the information to see more podcasts, more videos at chicagojazzmagazine.com, chicagojazz.com. And hopefully I will see you at the Hyde Park Jazz Festival the 28th and 29th of September. Yes.